Hello, this is Alphonse on your viewing device. Actually, I wanted to start with a little lesson today. I was planning this lesson for mobilizing the upper thoracic spine, the upper part of the chest. Hard to access usually, but we have some tricks in our pocket, or I have some tricks in my brain somewhere. But I first wanted to, like something came in between, or this always happens, something sneaked in between this plan. But if you want to move while I talk, um, I recommend you do a little bit of side bending movements. You can, you can move while I talk with your hand on your head or with your hand on your chest at the height of your manubrium because our hands are good for feeling and our tongue probably, or lips probably. The hands are very good dexterous and maybe try to find out what is your side that bends easier than the other and, and why is that? Why does why are you able to bend easier to one side and how much of your spine participate if your thoracic spine is like a stick or if it's as flexible as your uh, I don't know other parts and how well your shoulder girdle is connected to your pelvic girdle or if there's like a separation somewhere where the pelvic does not participate pelvis does not participate in the, this kind of explorations you, you can do while I talk about trauma. So um, um, this is a popular topic, topic, becomes more and more popular because it's of course pushed by the media. That's a nice thing for a change to talk about trauma. And uh, my question since many years is, is this question, can trauma be, can people recover from trauma? And I was studying research more uh, lately and I found an article, a very recent article from Dr. Susan Spicer. I will link that in the description below if you want to read the original article, which is titled, Can We Ever Fully Heal From Trauma? That's how she put it, fully heal. Um, or as uh, Peter Levin uh, coined at some point, he said, uh, he used the phrase release, release trauma from the body uh, and all these terms of course have a, a meaning. So can we ever fully heal from trauma? Improving ability. Um, and let's read this first couple of paragraphs which I shortened a little bit. Psychological trauma occurs as the result of an extraordinarily stressful event, just to know what we're talking about when we talk about trauma. And this event that diminishes or destroys your sense of security. Traumatic experiences exceed our or your ability to cope uh, and our your ability to integrate emotions involved with the experience. So it, and we're deep into my line of work here when we talk about emotions integrate emotions and the ability the ability to integrate emotions i try to work with people within their ability to integrate emotions that come up i, I try to stay <laughs> in that range of availability of being able to integrate emotions as they come up so trying or like a burst of emotion might, might be like a, uh, a sign of that the emotions are overwhelming, which does not mean they cannot be integrated. So return to this article by, uh, I think an excellent article by Dr. Susan Spicer. Psych uh, Spicer, yes. Psychological trauma can cause you to feel helpless, numb, disconnected, and I, I added this, abandoned, distant, and unable to trust others. Any situation that leaves you feeling overwhelmed and frightened can be traumatic even if it doesn't involve physical harm. It's not the objective facts that determine whether an event is traumatic, but rather your subjective emotional experience of that event. A situation may be highly traumatic to one person and only moderately disturbing to another. You all know this kind of person and the other kind of person. And who are we? Who, um, maybe you have also experienced a highly traumatic event in your life and this event may have prevented you from becoming who you could have become or this event might have um, made you the, the brilliant person you are today. So, so maybe sometimes traumatic events define us or help us to grow, to push us to improve.
So if I look at this beginning of this article, it starts with uh, psychological trauma and uh, she, she, she uses the word psychological and uh, my first question of course are there any other types of trauma when, when, when there's this kind of categorization and uh, the first thing we can think about or I, I think about is the physical trauma as opposed to the psychological trauma and that's a nice distinguishing isn't it uh, a nice difference Psych psychological and physical the mind and the body this separation uh, where does where did this separation start in our philosophy in our language in our how we perceive language and society so physical trauma I found another interesting article from the National Institute of General Medical Sciences who defined physical trauma is a serious injury to the body three main types of physical trauma are the blunt force trauma when an object or force strikes the body and then the penetrating trauma uh, when an object pierces the skin or body, usually creating an open wound. And then uh, they also introduced a third kind of trauma, the controlled injury. Surgery can cause physical trauma. And uh, what they didn't uh, classify, what they didn't mention is what I would call the wear and tear injury. When everyday movement habits push the body into inability, uh, like uh, chronic back pain. It just... It just starts someday, either with an injury, so that would be a force or a penetrating trauma, but some uh, chronic back pain can, can start light and start to become worse. It, the back pain becomes more bigger and bigger until it's um, causing us to be unable to work. Same with neck pain. Um, I once worked with a, a great veterinarian uh, and he performed a lot of surgery on animals and he, he had a herniated disc in his neck and uh, this disabled him for some time at least and he couldn't work anymore. Uh, when you have your own business, this is uh, terrible. Uh, and re he recovered from that. So I think it's possible to recover from physical trauma, but you know if you sustained physical trauma, how difficult it is. And you would not call it releasing tra physical trauma. It's a, like a disappearance, but we, we learn new ways of movement. We learn to take care of ourselves in a new way in order to be able to continue our lives or our improved lives, our improved abilities, the way we grow through the question of how can we continue our lives and um, when we mirror that to psychological trauma um, it's not that different how we uh, I think how we need to deal with psychological trauma and still this question pertains can we ever fully heal from trauma can we ever fully heal from physical or psychological Trauma, and it, this of course depends on the methods uh, we provide to ourselves, the variety of options we introduce, and um, uh, how far did you get with your side bending? And then I have this little plant here, and my little plant got some brown leaves. I'm very unhappy. Oh! It does come off already. There's two plants. You see, this is kind of grass and this is the, the thing that never dies usually. But now it's growing faster than, than this plant and it takes all the, the resources they shared. So this plant is dying because this plant is growing. Interesting topics for sure. So <laughs> let's continue uh, with movements. And these movements, of course, are not about just movements, but the movements affect us directly in our mental well-being as well as our physical well-being if we want to make this distinction. So thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next uh, video.